Next on BYUSN, the biggest snub in BYU sports history. We want retribution. Plus, Oregon transfer linebacker Harrison Taggart tells us why he joined the Cougs. And our best win bracket features the Miracle Bowl versus 84 Holiday Bowl. And who won between 90 Miami and Beck to Harleen? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, June 28th. I am Spencer Linton. He is the curator of AI art for future Louvre, Jerem Jordan. Okay, so Gamblin Gauchos, which is a fun follow for Big 12 content, uh, tweeted, uh, you know, AI mascots in the Big 12. Didn't include Texas and Oklahoma for obvious reasons. Um, so we've got the Mona Lisa style mascots of the Big 12 oh, yeah. from AI. Oh, yeah. Like what can AI not do, not host this show yet, um, so here's Cosmo <laughs> <laughs> in Mona Lisa form. I, I like this. Is that I, a mock turtleneck? That is, a, I think that's straight turtleneck, um, <laughs> which is fun. And then all the mascots in there. It's just like the like the deep, uh, you know, clear blue eyes there of Cosmo. Yes. Just you get you need a life jacket. You yes. get lost in those. The and horned then, frog cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> What's West Virginia? It's in the lower left. Like, what? Is, what is that? Is it a mummy? Like, what? I don't know what's what going on. What is the there. cyclone supposed to be? <laughs> this is this is great. This is this is great June content, okay? But we are close to July, man. We are almost in the Big Twelve, baby, which is super exciting. Of course, Friday night we got content uh, at 11 Mountain Time. If yeah. you show up 11:30, you can watch it streamed. Uh, celebrating the literal countdown to midnight, which is exciting. Saturday, we got you 5 to 7 Eastern on BYU TV. And then, uh, hey, tomorrow, Brett Yormark's on the show, by the way. The, the commissioner commish. of the Big 12. we the got questions. He's got answers. Let's go. On today's show, biggest snub in BYU history. What is it? Players, teams, uh, BCS, what, you know, injuries, what, you know, Brandon Davies, 2011 basketball thing. What's the biggest snub in BYU history? Harrison Tagger joins the program, four-star linebacker from Corner Canyon here locally, and Draper went to Oregon. He's back. We'll talk to him why he chose the Cougs again. Best win bracket, as mentioned. We got the semifinals. Massive matchups. The result from yesterday, the next semifinal today. Plus, is the NBA on NBC coming back? ba 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 basketball oh, Give me the theme song right now. <laughs> yes, and the SNL sketch uh, attached with it. All rise and shout, it's time for What's Trending. Let's go. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Bro, I'm fired up watching that video. I'm about to fire you up even more. I know. It's not always positive. Not exactly the emotion <laughs> you're hoping for, okay? <sighs> In the spirit of BYU legend Ashley Hatch and her yeah. recent, personally speaking, inexplicable yeah. snub yeah. from the United States Women's World Cup roster, we are now contemplating in Studio B. Because June 28th. What is the biggest snub in BYU sports history? Mm. Ashley's up there. Yeah, this is up there. This is a bad deal. Jerem, what takes the crown in this dubious BYU sports list? I, I, I just want to, like everybody else, want to see 2011's team play with Brandon Davies in the NCAA tournament. Okay. That was tough. Like, like, the whole situation, you know, is complicated, of course, but... It's like, oh, I just would have loved to see BYU with Brandon. Do they get a one seed? Do they get an easier Sweet 16 game? Do they get to the Elite Eight game? And then perhaps we call that the greatest team BYU. Yeah, does BYU beat history? San Diego State again in the Mountain West Conference Tournament Championship? Does Brandon Davies make that big of a difference? Like, oh. And the other one that's almost attached to it is that 2019-20s team doesn't get a March Madness because of COVID. The COVID snow. Oh. That team was playing like a top 10 team. They'd just taken down number two Gonzaga. Obviously went to Vegas and lost to St. Mary's in the semis, but number one three-point shooting team in the country. The way BYU played once Yoli Childs got out of that stupid nine-game suspension, Jay Billis joined the program and helped uh, you know, dump on that, which was fun. Once BYU got to the end of the season, was playing great ball. Oh, six seed, you beat an 11, 
you match up with the three, which, let's be honest, BYU was playing at that kind of level. Nobody wanted like to a, face three YU. No. TJ Haas, Jake Toulson, the only child at the peak of their powers. Zach, Zach Selius, who's like German second division MVP. Like, ah, oh, that team. I know. I got a million thoughts, but uh, I'll Alex just start Barcella there. Alex okay? was also on that team. Oh, by the way, AB is the fourth <laughs> option. Perhaps the greatest shooter in BYU history, not named Jim Fredette. But, like, that, those two really stick out. That one is absolutely brutal. I don't know that snub describes 2011. Maybe we as fans were snubbed of a potential experience. Yeah, sure. But those two stick out. Yeah, depending on the context, you can use snub how you want right. here. That situation's very It all hurts. By the way, I really enjoyed uh, J.C. Underwood's side of the story on the Jimmy Rex podcast. Just want to throw that up. Sure. Yeah, the Brandon Davies scenario is tough because as fans, you just you, you will never know. We'll never know. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, later, I can ask a couple people what would have happened. <laughs> I feel like that's going to go down. I'm going to bring that up at the judgment Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, cool, cool. I don't get to go in there. Okay, I have a couple questions. The BYU Sports Multiverse? Di- dinosaurs, <laughs> Brandon Davies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The 2020 scenario, yeah. I remember distinctly. I was working a shift at KSL, the NBC affiliate in Salt Lake City. In 2011. In 2020. In 2020. So, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Going back to your COVID Oh, in stuff. Salt Lake. I thought we are going uh, Palm Springs. Here. And we get the news. Like, I'm told, Spencer, uh, the other anchors are on vacation. Come in. Super easy night. There's a jazz game in Oklahoma City. We'll run some highlights. That's the night. That's Ru- Wednesday night. Ru- the Rudy Gobert night. Yeah. The night. Yeah. And I remember thinking, this wouldn't cancel the NCAA tournament, would it? <sighs> and the next thing you know, I'm on the news Everything, the world is shutting down. NBA's done. <laughs> They're done. And then everyone else. And then the NCAA, no, 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 no. Yeah. everything falls like dominoes. We were live on the air when, like, the Big East <sighs> tournament stopped playing They pulled the players off the court. Yeah. Uh, you're playing a game right now. We're pulling you off the court. You're not playing anymore. It's crazy. It was nuts. I, I try really hard to remain even keel, like, with what? sports and emotion and, like, after a tough loss for my favorite teams, like, Okay, I have avenues that I go to to just kind of, like, maintain perspective. That's about as heartbroken as I have ever been for a BYU team, that they did not get to play. I was devastated for them and for myself and for all BYU fans that that did not get to play out. We had a team that could have done something special. Like, just a void. I had a pit in my stomach for, like, a full week. I kind of still do. Oh, like. It was it's terrible. It's hard. So that's up there for sure. Yeah. That The COVID snub for sure. The other one, and this was at the peak of my junior high fandom, 1996 mm. BYU football. Oh, I am yeah. watching what all of the other top 10 teams are doing on a weekly basis as I watch Steve Sarkeesian and the Cougars climb the rankings. You get to dialed number up eight, the get to number six. 56K modem. Yes. Get to number six when they're – Playing in the, the uh, Mountain West, with her, the WAC championship game against Wyoming, they survive. And I'm like, they might, have got, they might have gotten themselves into a bowl alliance bowl now. Yes. Texas upsets Nebraska in the Big 12 championship game and ruins everything. They take the auto bid. Nebraska gets the other at large, and BYU is left out in the cold. Thankfully, the Cotton Bowl comes in and is like, we want, we want you. You're ranked it was, fifth. It was great. You they guys got to only play lost a New Day, Day, Day Bowl game. So, yeah, it was a, a nice consolation prize, if you will. And then BYU beats Kansas State. That was awesome, taking nothing away from that. But when BYU did not get a Bowl Alliance Bowl yeah. in 1996, I felt like that was one of the biggest snubs in BYU sports history. That team yes. deserved at 14-1 and one yes. to be in that type of bowl game. You beat yes. Texas A&M. Okay, you beat Wyoming, who was a good team, who was nationally ranked in the WAC championship they were, game. They were like 10-1. and one. Yes, yeah, they, they were 10-1. And, and then you Kansas beat Kansas State. State. Yeah. You finished number five. Like, that to me hurt. As a ninth grader at yes. Sunset Junior High School, yes. I was perturbed that BYU did not get a shot at good a use. major bowl perturbed, game. Perturbed, man. Ugh. Jeez. Lavelle went to Congress and talked about it. Like, it was a big deal right after the season. Um, I think Chad Lewis might have gone too or something. The Bowl Alliance had to shift some things. College football shifted some things. It became the yes. BCS, and then later Marshall, uh, sorry, Tulane, and then Marshall, and then BYU kind of challenged that, right? Isn't that interesting? BYU 
what they did in 84, what they did in 96, these yeah. were like monumental changes in the college football scheme. Yes, BYU landscape. was a, a big part of sort of like the little guy needing a better shot. Yes. 84 was the right time because you don't win that later. Right. Like, they didn't, the college like, football didn't want that to happen like, again. Yes, and what Marshall and Tulane did was cool, but BYU, remember, 79 to 84 is really good every year but 82, and even then won the whack, by the way. Okay, a, f- a few others that stick up. 2001, we brought up, not good enough to go to the BCS. Before BYU goes to Hawaii, Luke beat Mississippi State on a rescheduled game from 9-11. If Luke Luke's doesn't break his leg, his leg <sighs> does BYU get a Fiesta Bowl invite? Are they the first, uh, you know, kind of BCS buster at that point? Boise State kind of becomes that team later, right? Okay. And Utah jumps into that fray. Um, to me, in the end, I, my real answer might be not getting a Power 5 invite until 2023. It like, should have yes, happened, happened in 96. It should have. I, I would have preferred BYU somehow was in the Pac-10, Pac-12 back in the day. I'm talking in the 70s, 80s. Pac-12 had plenty of opportunities yeah, to include yeah. BYU. Like if the Pac-12 is undone at any point, it is because they chose this. They had opportunities to bring in BYU a long time ago. I'm not saying they're going to unravel because they don't have BYU, but they certainly could have been in there. Um, how, about, how about the whole 2020 season? Not getting to see that team that ended up being really good, play five power five teams. Like, could that team have been like a 10 and 3, 11 and 2 ish type group? What would they, they have done? They did the best they could. What, what would that team have done the, against the original the schedule? The only game they lose is at Coastal, who ended up being a top 15 team. And there was the a end. snub by the college football playoff rankings in that season. Yes. Remember and- Angry Kalani live on ESPN? <laughs> All of the analysts are like, BYU at number 14? 14. We like, thought they deserved to be in the top 10. Like, that initial ranking uh, did not help. I just edited myself. Did not help BYU because they end up as the first team out in the at-large convo. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it Oklahoma State them. and Baylor um, in that moment. Like, if Baylor wins that game and not Oklahoma State, maybe, be, you know, uh, like came down to like a foot. Taysom Hill's um, back half of his career at BYU, we all got snubbed to not fully see that we were lucky to see 2016 but frankly the offense that BYU ran did not cater to Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams and so BYU goes nine and four they play uh, you know they, they, they lose four games by a combined by eight, eight points. points so they would have needed 12 to be undefeated but it's like oh that that team that played six power fives by the way was really good and unfortunately the offense I don't think catered to their skill set like that's the best backfield in BYU history the QB running back combo, to me, that's the best one ever. And they're reunited yes, in they New are. Orleans right now. Yes, they are. We're going to see some uh, RPO <laughs> with those guys. That'll be fun. I hope that happens. For sure. In, in the Wildcat format, it Taysom will. Hill, the quarterback, and off to Jamal Williams. It's technically Wildcat, but no, it's not. It's Taysom Hill, quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I imagine that many of you have some strong opinions about this. Yeah. What is the biggest snub in BYU sports history. It's like hard to think about a lot of these. <laughs> All right, our question of the day again. We want you to answer yeah. it. Jason Pete offers the initial response on okay. Facebook. Number one, Steve Young not winning the Heisman Trophy in 1983. Okay, Mike Rozier wins it. It was incredible at Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska, yes. And this is the era of Nebraska. Running backs. And, okay, the voting, he was like 630 behind. 630 points of votes. Whatever that total constitutes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, behind like 329 in the first place votes. It's a massive margin there. So second was pretty good. I mean, that was the best until tie. Sure. There were a lot of third place Heisman quarterbacks at BYU. Jason Pete adds 1996, not getting a Bull Alliance bid. Oh, yeah, that one hurt because it was like we're sort of in a more modern <sighs> era now. But I mean, BYU helped sort of get the little guy in there. Let me give you another one. <sighs> um, 06, 07, 09, for those teams to not uh, lose uh, one more game. Had they only had one loss. They're a BCS buster. They could have been B- in the BCS as yeah. the top-ranked, top 12, uh, in the top 12, uh, non-Power 5, at the time Power 6 team, because the Big East was out there. Those teams were so close. You're talking about an Arizona field goal away yeah. in 06 uh, at, at Arizona. I know. Like, ah, like 09, it's like. Florida State at home and TCU, it's like, oh, shoot. Yeah. Can you win one of those? That's, those teams were so good. Why did Texas have to beat Nebraska in 1996? BYU's in the Fiesta Bowl. Which <laughs> is they funny. don't. The funny thing is, BYU's first bowl game was the Fiesta. 
We've been clamoring, scratching, clawing to get back to that. Yeah. Just And there were only 11 bowl games. Whack Champ went to there. But, like, in 65, we win the league. But we don't go to a bowl game. No. It doesn't happen until 74 with Gary Shea. Good point. BYU's been to the Fiesta Bowl and the Cotton Bowl. We've been to Tangerine, <laughs> Citrus, all the, all the bowl games. Sydney Bauer Bank on Instagram answers, BYU, Utah, oh. 2010. <laughs> this is a great one. I can't oh. believe, I can't believe we forgot that, this. Good pull. I'm glad, good pull, glad Sydney. that we asked you. Good pull, Sydney. His knee was down. Brandon, Brandon Bradley. Brandon Bradley's knee was down. He has an interception. <sighs> And then they review it. He, he hey. runs, and then the, he fumbles, but they review it, and they're like, yeah, his, his uh, you know, it, it was a fumble. And it was like, no, his knee was down. Our colleague Greg Rebell responded oh. how all of us were feeling. No! No! <laughs> no! When you hear the ref say, yeah, it's Utah ball, and he says, no! We, I, I agree. Know. Yes. That was terrible. That was the opposite of Greg Rebell. That was Larry Chris Koviak. Utah <laughs> lost that game to BYU. Brandon Bradley won the game for BYU. Yes. And... <sighs> 2012, make a field goal. Sure. You know, that one hurt. Yeah. Take like some, the, convert a two point conversion in 2016. Uh, <laughs> that, Taysom Hill, uh, sorry, Jamal Williams gets hurt in that game. Otherwise, Jamal's going to drag two guys out and Taysom's going to have a one on one. Yes. Instead, it was one on like three. And <sighs> t- uh. Brutal. And by the way, when they run out on that play, I think there was some confusion by sure. the players. All right. Okay, this one from Adam Gibby. This is hilarious okay. on Twitter. BYU basketball not getting a two seed in 2011. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they got. I thought three seed was favorable, honestly. With no Brandon all things Davies, considered, it, yeah, they had a great run. Yeah. Okay, but he adds or anything to do with Gary Barta. Okay, Gary Barta <laughs> was the Iowa AD, college football playoff committee chairman, and the chairman in 2020. Yeah, and that was tough. Yeah, he pushed BYU to take that game against Coastal, like. Because of what Gary Barta and the committee did, BYU was like, we got to do something to try right. and like Im- impress it. So, so they, on three days' notice, they take a cross-country game against Coastal I'm Carolina. I'm sitting co- in, U- in Connecticut. Um, in Connecticut, sit- I'm sitting there um, you know, at a BYU men's basketball game. No one's, there are no fans. And I'm like, what? BYU's playing Coastal? Yeah, it was <laughs> This cra- week? That was the on craziest. A, like, it's Wednesday, and it's like... <laughs> I'm getting texts before, you know, and it's like, Jake Edmonds broke it. He used to work here. And it was like, dude, what? Coastal. What? And BYU wasn't punished for that, by the way. No. There was no. Rightfully so. Yeah. On three days' notice. Rightfully one yard? So. Yes. Like, no one cared. Everybody was like, props to BYU for, like, taking on an incredible challenge. Yeah. And then everyone was like, wait, why don't we do this more often? Why do we have to Schedule- schedule eight years Yes. Out? Why, why are games <laughs> scheduled 12 years out? <laughs> <laughs> we can do it Why, on three what, days. what are we doing? Like, we always play in Michigan State in, like, 2033. Oh, can we play them next year? Hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This is a fantastic yeah. topic. You have brought some great I things love to the it table. And it. Yes. Yeah, it's Fun cool. conversation. Okay. I don't know if you heard, but BYU's going to the Big 12. <laughs> this is very exciting. Uh, the big party is coming up July 1st. When BYU's in it, it's a BYUSN game day, 5 to 7 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Come hang out if oh, you're yeah. local uh, at the Student Athlete Building Outdoor Fields. Up next, we move on to the other Final Four matchup Mm. in our BYU football best wins bracket. It's the Holiday Bowl showdown, the Miracle Bowl, and the National Championship clincher square off. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Live in Studio B, this is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Fantastic trending topic today. Mm. Holy cow. What's the greatest snub in BYU or the biggest snub? Can, I can't use the word can I, greatest. Can I say um, biggest snub when BYU Joseph Sports. Smith went to the White House <laughs> and talked to Martin Van Buren about Missouri, your cause is just, but we can do nothing for you. That was a pretty big snub back in the 1830s. Does Joseph Smith qualify as BYU? Or is it, is it at Brigham no, Young and then after? I think it's Brigham Young on. <laughs> I think you're right. Once, once the Pioneers get to Iowa. Okay. Let's get to our BYU 6 2 2 20, though, would have been a linebacker. Oh, Big dude. BYU football best wins bracket. Okay. The other semifinal matchup is on tap today. Uh, so if you haven't followed it to this point, 
We seeded 16 games. Yeah. We've worked our way down to the final four. Here we go. We need your help to decide the greatest win in BYU football history. Okay, yesterday, I just saw the result. Oh my God. 1990 yeah. Miami, one seed taking on four seed back to Harleen. Advancing with 81%. You got it right. It's Miami, you 1990. Right. This right. is the right answer. I love back to Harleen. We love that play, but 90 Miami is the best win. It should win this whole thing. All right, the one seed is okay. into the championship. Oh, it's pretty chalky here. Don't choke on the dust. We almost had the first upset with the Cotton Bowl against Beck to Harleen. In fact, yes. I like the way it started. I'm surprised the Cotton Bowl didn't hold on and win that. And we feel like I pushed over the edge on Twitter. I think you may have. <laughs> no, may no, have. no. You swung the vote, Jerem. <laughs> it ended up losing badly to the number one overall seed, but whatever. All right, the number two and three seeds in our matchup of the day. I don't know how you can ever top this one. Touchdown! One of the most spectacular comebacks in the history of college football. The Robbie Bosco, he's done it for him today. Happy holidays from the Holiday Bowl. That voice of Robbie Bosco. That was Steve Young as an analyst yes. in the offseason of the USFL. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Second matchup. Two seed, 84 Holiday Bowl against Michigan. First national championship. Three seed, 1980 Holiday Bowl. First win in a bowl game. Miracle Bowl against SMU. You're down we 20 with three and a half minutes. With 84 Michigan, the two seed. BYU 12 and 0 ranked number one. Tried to lose the game. Turned the ball over six times. Trailed 17 10 in the fourth. Robbie Bosco. Oh, the interceptions galore. Gets hurt. We had him on the show uh, last week, which is great. We'll hear from him in a second. Later in the fourth, throwing to Glenn Kozlowski in the back of the end zone. This is not a throwaway. This is to Glenn, who always had the awkward celebrations. Later, Kelly Smith out of the backfield on kind of an ad-libbed route here. Robbie Bosco back in the game after the injury. Finds his guy, as James Bates would say. And Marv Allen would seal the win. BYU wins 24-17. They had to wait. On the other bowl games, they find out they are indeed the national champions. The last team to go unranked to win the Natty, and then later Auburn did it with Cam Newton. That's it. Since only 84 two, to go unranked teams, to yeah. Natty. The three seed. Oh, wait. Pause. Robbie Bosco was on the show last week and had this to say about the 84 Holiday Bowl. Okay. Well, there are a lot of good BYU wins when I played, when I coached. Um, you guys talked about one with the Kansas State yeah. in the New Year's Day Bowl. That seriously is one of the great wins we've ever had. Um, the Detmer game against Miami was a great one. And, you know, even when I go back to our season, you know, games like the Morrell leap over against Hawaii, the fourth and ten against Wyoming, but it ultimately comes all down to that final game when – Kind of all the marbles were on the line. We're ranked number one. We're in a position to win it all. Uh, have a lot of turnovers. Um, but our defense was spectacular all year. And I just got to go with that game. Of course you got to go with that game. He I played in it. He came back with a hero in it. Yeah, come on. All right, he, Robbie Bosco in that 84 Robbie team. Bosco. Taking on the first BYU team to ever win a bowl game. And what a way to win it. They were 0-4 were the BYU Cougars in bowl games going into the 1980 Holiday Bowl. And seemingly headed to be 0-5. Look, BYU's losing <laughs> Until this game, Until right? this, Jim McMahon convinced his coaches to not punt on fourth down, down 20. With some creative language. Two, players, two plays later got a touchdown. And then things started to bounce the Cougars' way. A blocked punt. Bill Shefflin sets up BYU for... One final gasp, Clay Brown, give me that! 45 all, Kurt Gunther kicks the extra point, BYU wins 46-45. Think about that, you're down 20 points with under four minutes to play. Not like in the third quarter. With under four minutes to play, you're down 20. Wow. And you win the game. And to win your first bowl game in such dramatic fashion, like that's the greatest, most dramatic bowl game finish, I think, ever in a bowl game. Like, How what? dare you disparage the New Mexico Bowl last year? Oh my gosh, that was great. That was a good finish. So this is interesting. What do you value? Do you value just the 
the miracles involved in this game, or do you put your like eggs in the basket the of well, this one BYU the national championship game? The thing is, in '84, BYU was a heavy favorite against Michigan, and they yeah, should have. Michigan been. was six and five. They had been ranked size three. Jim Harbaugh had broken his arm. Da da da. Last summer, we had Jim McMahon in studio, and here's what he had to say about the 1980 Holiday Bowl. I just said, you know, we got back on the huddle. I said, look, we've come too far now. Let's win this game, you know. And uh, the, I remember, I think it was the first pass that I threw that was, it was to Clay Brown across the middle. And it was probably the worst pass I'd thrown all year long. And thank God, because the, the cornerback on the offside had, had let his man go and was about, if I'd have led Clay with the ball, it probably would have been picked off game over. But I threw a terrible pass behind him. And he didn't catch the one with the one hand like he did in the first mm -hmm. half. He let it go. The next one I think I threw out of bounds down the sidelines and then, you know, the three seconds left, you know, you got one play. And it's a play we practiced every, every week, you know, you just hope you never have to use it. And uh, it worked out to perfection. I mean, first guy down is supposed to tip it if he can't catch it. And the ball came right down to Clay. I mean, it was just like there was three or four SMU guys around him and not one of those guys touched the ball. 56 yards in the air and right into the hands of Clay Brown, surrounded by four SMU defenders. And, and an army that of angels. BYU had three <laughs> plays. They had three plays. The first two, as Jim explained, did not go well, so they were forced to just throw up the Hail Mary, and they pulled it off. But, yeah, what do you value? Do you value just this miraculous comeback to win BYU's first bowl game? Or do, or do you take the game that BYU had to win to secure the national championship? Like, I don't know that BYU beating Michigan 24-17 is the greatest win, like individually in a game, but what it meant to the season, obviously, is why it's the number that's two seed. Why, that's why it's in this. Yes. Yeah, that's why it's absolutely, that's why it was put as the two seed. So you can argue, what's greater than a national championship? Yeah, BYU and, played, and, and this frankly, was they played a bad game, Jeremy. They, were, they did yes. not play well against I, Michigan. I'm half joking when I say BYU tried to lose it uh, with six uh, giveaways. But the Miracle Bowl, is so unbelievable. So it's the Miracle Bowl, it's a national championship, it's beating number one, or it was, uh, you know, back to Arlene, which only got 29% of the vote. I'm a little surprised by that. I thought that'd be a lot closer with Miami, but Miami, of course, we've argued the ranking at the time and the final ranking, amazing. But like all four of these, if you told me any of those four win this, I would go, I get it. Get it. My yeah. personal flavor is Miami. Who are you taking in this matchup? I'm taking Miracle Bowl. Me too. Yeah, I'm taking Miracle Bowl. Like, just what it meant to the program at the time and how they had to pull that off. BYU was an underdog in that game, like, in some ways. They were ranked higher, but they still went in as an underdog, according to Las Vegas. Yes, and we will find out tomorrow, and then um, and then we're not going to know the winner until Monday. We're going to give it a couple extra days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So go and vote on Twitter go. here in a couple of minutes when it's posted and uh, weigh in. Let's all right. go. Get all, get all your... Kevin Durant uh, bots going, and uh, you can wait. Did you see the other day he jumped in a, a Twitter space about how he's not a top five player? <laughs> Why not? Kevin, I'll join, join I've got an opinion on this. Join this one. Let's go. Okay, uh, join Spencer and myself. Alema Harrington going to hang out with us as well. We're going to have Greg Bell, Hans Olsen, Tom Homo. It's going to be great. The countdown to the Big 12 celebration this Friday at the Student Athlete Building uh, Fields. Starts at 11 Mountain. We're going to start broadcasting on the BYU Cougar Socials at 11.30 Mountain. First 1,500 fans get a t-shirt. There's fireworks, celebration. It's going to be awesome. Join us Friday night late, baby. Up next, the newest BYU football linebacker, Harrison Taggart, yeah. is in studio to discuss his move from Oregon to Provo. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. And here BYU has some experience. Four star into BYU football. It's another Pac-12 transfer to BYU, and those have yielded some great players recently. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station, live in Studio B alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. We welcome now, for the first time, to BYU Sports Nation, the newest linebacker. Harrison Taggart is with us. Harrison, welcome to Studio <laughs> What's B. What's up, man? What's up? Thanks for having me. Good to have you back in Utah, man. Uh, the one year at Oregon, of course, and now you're back. What's it been like to be at BYU now? 
It's awesome, an incredible fan base, and it's awesome being back home, being able to catch up with, with some old friends and family, and yeah, I'm excited to be back and excited to be a Coug. You were very highly recruited out of high school, out of Corner Canyon, and had several options, elected to go to Eugene, but now put your name in the transfer portal, you end up at BYU, but not surprisingly, were highly sought after once you got in the transfer portal. <laughs> so why did BYU win out among so many different suitors? Um, BYU is different. Um, there's so much going for BYU with it going into the Big 12 with the new defensive staff with led by Coach Hill and then with Coach Enna being my, my position coach. Coach Enna always preaches that it's just, it's different. There's something different about BYU and it has a lot to offer that other schools can't offer. Um, and it's home. Yeah. What were some of those differences that you liked enough to want to come here? There are a lot of hometown players. Um, the Brotherhood, you really notice, like, with the whole religious aspect, there's a different culture, um, and the coaching philosophy is a little bit different than, than a lot of other schools. We love Jay Hill. You brought him up. Incredible defensive coordinator coming over from Weber State. I see you smiling as I mentioned his mm -hmm. name. <laughs> what were the conversations like with Jay Hill when he was essentially trying to convince you that BYU is the place for you and you have a spot to fit in as a linebacker here? You know, my conversations with Coach Hill were like, it was almost like a best friend conversation. Like, we just talk about life, how my day's going, what I'm up to. Um, we did get into scheme a little bit and how I'd fit and all that stuff, but Coach Hill is just a great guy and you can tell the intensity when you're just talking to him. Like, he's fired up to be at BYU and he's excited to lead this defense and call it. And it's, just, I am so excited to play for Coach Hill. What role did the Big 12 play in your decision? A really big role. I yep. mean, I think everybody in the BYU, BYU Nation is excited about the Big 12, but I am so excited. Playing in a Power 5 conference is always huge, and they're top competitors, and I want to win the Big 12. Let's go. Harrison Taggart on BYU Sports Nation. How do you see yourself fitting in specifically into this defense? Like For those that haven't seen you play, what do you bring to the field, and what will you do in this defense? Um, I'm a really fast, really physical linebacker. Um, I'll add a ton of speed to the defense, a ton of smarts. Um, and then being at Oregon, I have been able to wrap my head around a playbook, what a college scheme looks like. Um, so I'll be able to add the, add the smarts to the team and be able to help lead the team. Was it, uh, what was the process like coming out of high school? Um, and how much did BYU initially reach out to you? Um, so out of high school, I was... I didn't talk to BYU once. Um, not once? Not once, oh. no. Um, did BYU not reach out, or did you, were you like, I'm good? No, BYU never reached out. Okay. It was just, just not the fit. Better late I mean, than yeah. never. Better. I'm glad they reached out later. <laughs> it beats me, I don't know, yeah. but they I'm here now. And, yeah. yeah, I'm here now, and so excited to be here. So. Were you disappointed BYU didn't reach out initially? I mean, yeah. I mean, I was definitely interested. I mean, I'm here now, and... Yeah, I was disappointed, but I mean they have their reasons, and yeah. I'm, I'm, everything works here, out for a reason. Yeah. If BYU had reached out and been like, you know, heavy on the trail for you, would you have come here perhaps originally, or was Oregon going to be the spot? Oh, that's a hard question. I don't know. Um, it definitely would have been in the tops, and you would have posted on Instagram, and BYU would have. It would have been, been in, your in top that five group there. of five. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So gotcha. Harrison yeah. Taggart on BYU Sports Nation, linebacker for BYU. What is life like in the transfer portal when you throw your name in? <laughs> so chaotic. <laughs> Especially I, as a four-star recruit. You, you put your name in and you sign your name on this paper, put your email and your number, and then all of a sudden you have JUCO, D2, D1, D3. You have everybody reaching out because they don't know where you stand, why you're leaving, what's going on. So everybody wants a shot. And it's just, it's chaotic, but... I think the transfer portal is necessary for, for college sports. Uh, yeah, a couple years ago it would have been harder. One, you would have had to sit out. Mm -hmm. And two, it, it would have been harder to kind of be known. I do love the D3 and Juco just shooting their shot. Just in case the academics weren't that good. Yeah, come here for a year. Help us win a national championship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing where in Kansas? Yeah, exactly. Now you're at BYU. Um, are, you, are you enrolled right now? Are you living down here now? I have to wait until... Whatever, because Oregon was quarter system, BYU gotcha. semester system. So fall semester will be the first and whatnot.
Okay, yeah. uh, how are you expecting to kind of fit in? And uh, you mentioned a lot of hometown guys. Are you familiar with a bunch of guys on the team at this point? Yeah, I'm familiar with a bunch of guys. I've connected with Isaiah Glasker, Parker Kingston, the McKen Marcus McKenzie, and all those guys. So, awesome. Yeah. As far as a linebacker's room goes, what kind of uh, communication have you had with, you know, the, the hero, the heroes of that room, like the guys that have been there for a long time, including Ben Bywater. Like what, what, what is that brotherhood like in the linebacker room? Uh, it's super tight. All of them are. It's a true brotherhood in that room. Um, it's part of the reason I wanted to come here is I, BYU came up to Oregon and I was able to see really how those linebackers mesh with Max Tooley and Ben Bywater and now AJ. Um, it's a really tight room and I want to play under those guys and soak up what they've been taught over, over the course of the years. I had forgotten uh, because of the result that BYU played Oregon. Uh, yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't bring this up. <laughs> what, what was that like? Because you're a kid from Draper, and, and, you know, it sounds like, you know, you would have liked BYU to express some interest. And then BYU comes in number 12. That was, that was a wild one. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It kind of blew my mind. You, you walk into the stadium, and it's covered in blue. Like, you're like, what the heck? Like, it's almost like a hometown game. Austin um, is our stadium. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but it was cool playing with, playing against a couple of my friends and being able to see them and see fans that, that I knew and, yeah, it was cool. And you played in three games, uh, so you maintain a red shirt, uh, which is awesome. You have four years of eligibility. Was this one of the games you played in? Yeah, BYU was one of the games I played in. Okay. Um, do you remember the plays? Yeah, I do. Who who you did you make a couple tackles? Tons of pass rush. Um, I made one or two tackles, but. Yeah, it was, it was cool. At that point, we were just crying. Um, but it, yeah, yeah, it's all good. Um, what, what do you expect? Because you've been at a uh, notable Power 5 program, obviously, in Oregon and big time. Um, in year one of the Big 12, of sort of like what – and there are a few Power 5 transfers like yourself, but like what Power 5 football will be like to BYU? Because we feel like, hey, in Independence, BYU played a very good schedule. It's not like they're like, whoa, this is totally different. But certainly playing 10 in a row is going to be unique to mm -hmm. BYU. Yeah, it's going to be really good for BYU. I feel like a conference is really good for every single program, but a Big 12 conference is amazing, especially having still Texas and Oklahoma in the conference and still having – we're still playing Arkansas this year, which is awesome. Um, I think it really helps BYU's success in long term for a national championship, for a Big 12 championship. It just helps push the rankings and help the program succeed. I know you obviously want to get on the field and do everything you can to earn a spot on the field. What are your expectations as a transfer coming in in year one of this program in terms of how you are going to help this team? I just, it's the coach's, coach's, coach's eyes, coach's standpoint. Um, wherever they see me fit, I am more than down to play that. If they see me cheering on on the sidelines, I'm more than down to do that too. Um, it's just the coach's standpoint, but I would love to, push in special teams and get as much time on the field as I could this year. Is there somebody that you emulate or seek to emulate in the NFL, an NFL player comparison, something you strive for? Um, I've always loved watching and trying to play after Isaiah Simmons. He played, he's from Clemson, he's playing uh -huh. for the Arizona Cardinals yep. right now. Um, his biggest attribute is speed. Um, and he's a little, he plays a little bit of safety, a little bit of outside linebacker, a little bit of inside linebacker. He plays all over the field. Um, so I love trying to, trying to play after him. Uh, what are you doing for fun right now, since it's June? Oh, fishing. Been out shooting shotguns quite a bit, sporting clays. Um, yeah, that's what my June's looked like so far. This is a good spot for you. It's not too far away from home, the fishing. <laughs> the Provo River is yeah. like right renowned. There. It's big yeah. time, man. We're having some of the best fly fishing in the it's United big States. Time. Yeah. 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 Harrison, congratulations on everything. Glad to have you back at BYU, and thanks for hanging out with us on BYU Sports Nation. Thanks for having me. I appreciate awesome, it. Man. Okay, coming up this Friday, BYU football great moments as told by players. Volume 1, this is a really fun one. Ty Detmer, Mitch Matthews, Tanner Mangum, Max Hall on the show breaking down some of the greatest plays in BYU history. Friday at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now listen, we're just full of crazy questions today. Like this, is BYU losing one of its long-standing identities? We'll explain next on BYU Sports Nation. I'm okay with this one. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah. What's the next thing? 
There's something out there, right? Well, we'd be able to not tell it. <laughs> Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer. He is Jaron. Just had a great conversation with the newest BYU linebacker, Harrison Taggart. Got a great question going today on social media. What's mm. the biggest snub in BYU sports history? While you think about those two things, if you missed any of it, go back and watch it. We've got to roll out today's headlines right now, however. BYU's gearing up for joining the Big 12, which is in how many days? Hit it! <laughs> Countdown <laughs> to the Big 12. Three days away. And like five seconds away. Uh, Saturday well, will... I thought we were going to get to the Big 12 before that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, BYU will officially be a member of the conference. Don't want to miss tomorrow's episode. Uh, the Commissioner Brett Yormark joined the program. We've got a ton of festivities Friday night, Saturday as well. BYU finished 37th overall in the final Learfield Directors' Cup standings. 37? That's out of 305 Division I universities. Pretty good, but normally I'm uh, top 25 there, higher, Spence. Yeah. yeah. Points are based off finishes in the NCAA championships. BYU was the highest finishing West Coast Conference school, not surprisingly. Thus, they win the West Coast Conference Commissioner's Cup. BYU finished fifth among current Big 12 programs in the Learfield Cup standings. By the way, the fall sports combined for nearly the same amount as winter and spring combined. Um, softball, men's volleyball, men's basketball, women's basketball not producing any points. That hurt. They didn't get the tournaments. Yes. There were some great uh, other teams. 30, you know, top 40s, awesome. But I'd love top 25. Yeah. Incoming freshman golfer Peter Kim won the stroke play portion of the 125th Utah State Amateur Championship with a 67 in round two yesterday. He has the first round by in the round of 64 today, which is now match play. Also joining him, defending champ Zach Jones, who won it last year. Advanced, uh, Keanu Akina is another current Cougar on there. Incoming Cougar Cooper Jones, Zach's brother, and former Cougar Elijah Turner are all in the round of 64. Round Ooh. of 32 and 16 Thursday, quarterfinals and semis. Coming up Friday, the 36-hole final is Saturday. Good luck to those. Some Major League Baseball news from Michael Rucker, who pitched one scoreless inning. He struck out one batter for the Chicago Cubs last night. Rucker with a 4.30 earned run average in 29 and the third innings of work in relief this season. And men's rugby players Tielu Sagala, Mike Biaggi, and Connor Olvera and his mustache have been selected to the, to the Collegiate Rugby Shield, the nation's premier college rugby all-star game. On July 13th in Harriman, Utah, Zions Bank Stadium. That game will air at 8 Eastern on FS1. That's awesome. Those I, know, three guys. I know a guy that might be involved in that broadcast. I am calling that game. There you go. Which will be fun. There you go. In okay. the middle of Big 12 Media Days. <laughs> that makes things I'm skipping or jump down to Austin. <laughs> yeah, it's in Utah, but you're calling it from Austin. It's a weird deal. If you follow me on social, you know my weird travels there. Those are today's headlines. Now let's opinionate and whip it. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Athlon Sports Bowl, uh, bowl projections have BYU playing Air Force in the Frisco yes. Bowl. What's be Is that better or worse than the Independence Bowl against Pac-12? Oh, man. <laughs> These are very close. Like, the idea of going back to Shreveport, not ideal. But playing a Pac-12 team is fun yeah. in the whatever bowl game. Yeah. So I like a matchup against a Pac-12 team a little bit better than playing Air Force in Frisco, Texas. I'd, I'd still lean toward Shreveport. And Air Force has been pretty good the last couple of years. Not been what they used to be, but obviously playing suddenly the triple option just stinks and you don't want a knee injury from some guy getting cut. <laughs> I'd prefer to not play Air Force, honestly. I respect everything about Air Force. I was born on an Air Force base, love it. But like the style of football is tough on the guy's knee. Give me Utah in the Independence Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Best of both worlds right there, man. ESPN's draft experts, Jordan Reed, friend of the program, Matt and Matt Miller ranked the 50 biggest NFL draft steals of the past decade. Fred Warner ranked number nine on that list as a biggest steal. He was taken 70th overall in the 2018 draft. Is Fred the biggest steal out of BYU in the past decade? Oh. Has to be right. Question. To like, be. if they redid that draft, he'd he'd be like the fifth pick, dude. Like Josh Allen was in that draft, and you know, there's some real Saquon Barkley and so on. But like, remember that was coming off 2017. You don't have to have a good team year to have a good player emerge from that group. Yes, uh, unquestioned. Maybe Taysom Hill undrafted. The ability. Yeah, he's been a steal as an undrafted. Oh, player. for sure, for sure. But Fred. Yeah. 
Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Sorensen is an interesting guy. Is that a really nice career? He's in that conversation as an undrafted guy, right? Yep. Okay, future topic. Who's the greatest undrafted free agent out of BYU? Mm. <laughs> Steve Young. Because <laughs> he technically wasn't Supplementary draft. Yeah. yeah. The Jets are reportedly bracing <laughs> to be this year's hard knocks team. Why is this the best choice? Because we want to see Zach and Aaron, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, the Aaron Rodgers scenario, coupled with everything that went on with Zach Wilson, would make that quarterback's room. Like, the quarterback's room alone could be their own hard knock show. Yes. Uh, I heard the team's going to give the camera crew hell the whole time. <laughs> just, that's what they're going to do. <laughs> it's going to make, I love make their like, lives just terrible. He's like, he hasn't made it hard for me. It's, it's made it more great. like heaven. I think he said he's made it more like more heaven. More like heaven. Yeah. yeah that's great. <laughs> The Athletic, Stuart Mandel, another friend of the program. He has a preseason all-geezer team. <laughs> Featuring the, all the old guys in college football. But get this, no BYU players. No BYU players on the all-geezer team. We have dudes with two kids. <laughs> has BYU lost one of its long-standing identities? Yes, Talmadge Gunther and <laughs> Caleb Christensen should be on this list. Come on. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> Who are, the, who are the 25 It's still the identity, year trust me. We're going to be okay. All geezer team. The NBA to NBC has some potential, according to a report last night. Are you a fan of this? One million percent yes. Me too. Give me the theme song. Bum, 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 there was an bum, SNL bum, skit bum, where they bum, talk bum, about bum, how bum, there bum. were words to the song originally. And they were ba 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 basketball. <laughs> give me, give me, give me the ball, cause I'm gonna oh. dunk it. Dunk it! Are you kidding me? Like you get to the playoffs, yeah. And like that theme song oh. starts. Oh man! What if I told you another network owns the rights and has been using it for years, Spence? Yeah, I. And it's Fox. I know. It's I don't, Fox. I don't like. And it, it doesn't work. It doesn't. Take work. it back, NBC. Take get the NBA back. rights and get Marv Albert's ghost out there. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> After the break, rise and shout outs to some BYU golfers who continue to get it done on the course. Yeah, baby. This is BYU Sports Nation. Ba 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 basketball. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e commerce logistics shipping partner. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand as Dax Milne runs into the end zone in front of no fans in 2020. Was that Troy? Troy? I think Troy. it was well Western Kentucky or Troy. Same thing. Uh, download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps or listen to the pod. Subscribe, rate, and review. We were just watching the 1997 NBA Finals open from NBC during the break. Those were the days! I remember being six on Fargo Lane in Portland, Oregon, hearing that super loud in our living room and sprinting yeah. from outside to be like, oh, Sonic Suns round two? Yep. Life from Phoenix? Game three. Barkley versus <laughs> Sean Kemp and gave it like Let's Danny go. Ainge in there. Let's go, baby. Our question of the day, what's the biggest snub in BYU sports history? BYU brag sheet on Twitter answers, Fun the one. 2001 BYU football team going 12-0 and but being shut out of a BCS bowl game. Told beforehand, like, you're not going to get in even if you win. Even if you beat Hawaii, yeah. you're not getting in. And so at that point, BYU was just emotionally and physically devastated. And so they yeah. gave up the most points ever allowed in a BYU football game that day. 72. Ugh. David Crawford on Facebook. An invite to the Pac-12 for reasons they will now ignore for San Diego State and potentially SMU. Well, it goes back way before that. Hard to be independent, but in the long run, I believe BYU will be better off. There was some cover. Someone was saying the other day, right, Spence, that in the, in the 80s, late 70s, that... Uh, there was a Sports Illustrated cover about BYU to the pack or something. It's like, what? Yeah, it's been, it's a been around for forever. A time. Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Some BYU dude on Twitter. That's his handle. <laughs> Please be more generic. Answers, BYU won the Pac-12 South in 2021, but was left out of the conference championship game, and Utah went and said, huge nice. snub for BYU. <laughs> nice. Well played. Where's that flag? Where's, our, yeah, where where's is the our flag? banner? Ben Bagley, find that Banner. Carry in the banner for us. Yeah, where That's is it? coveted piece of BYU Sports yeah. Nation memorabilia. Where is it? I think we sent it to the U. We mailed it to the <laughs> sports sh- information. Rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. How about Peter Kim, incoming freshman, winning stroke play. Zach Jones, the defending champ, third. 
among the other guys. Yeah, um, yeah the five total in the uh, Utah Amateur. So good luck to them now in uh, match play. Get it done, boys. Our thanks to today's guest, Harrison Tagger, newest BYU linebacker. Sorry to Dennis, ran out of time. The conversation continues on 24-7 uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. This and all our shows are on demand on BYU. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to the great Brad Martin. We'll see you tomorrow oh, for more Brad. BYU Sports Rest Nation. Go Kooks. Is the NBA back on NBC yet? <laughs> Please. Make it happen. Ba 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 basketball.